I have even taken some of Sabine Wren's work. She's quite talented. You think you can take whatever you want? Things you didn't make? Didn't earn? Things you don't even understand? You don't deserve to have this art. Who deserves what is irrelevant. What matters is who has power. Okay, what is this video going to be about? Is it going to be me telling you that AI artists are some villains, if not Sith Lords? Not quite. This video is going to be about why there is so much hostility between us artists and people who use AI to make art. My opinion is going to be based on what I saw in my comment section when I put out a video about using AI in art and I was a bit shocked by the response to it. One particular comment that stuck with me most was, it's all fear. You artists, you're afraid of new technologies and it's just all emotional. I thought a bit about that and my answer is hell the f Yeah, it is fear. And yes, we are afraid that everyone and their mom's friend is going to be able to put out imagery of fantasy stuff or, or just any stuff that used to be drawn by people who can actually draw and who took their time to learn it. So yes, we are afraid. So we're both afraid, both parties of something being taken away from us. And we're also both afraid that something could get out of our control. I'll get to that. I also don't want to miss out on saying this time that I want to exclude people who only consume AI art because I consider them a bit as the normies in this context. I want to exclude them from this discussion because I think it's not really fair to blame people for consuming something of which there is so much around and you can't even tell the difference between one and the other. You get it. I'm aware that most people watching this channel are artists. A lot of them are comic artists and we have different opinions about AI art within our community because comic artists per se, we use a lot of time drawing the same thing over and over again from the same perspective, the same colors. It's not like we're always making new artworks with lots of creativity. A lot of what we're doing feels automated, it feels mechanical. So there are a lot of people among us who, who really rely on tools that make it easier to do what we want to do. I mean, if anyone came up to us and tells us, hey, you can feed an AI model with your art or with your what, what you are doing all the time and it will do it for you, the mechanical processes, but you still have the power to control what the, the image is going to look like, I think a lot of us would say, hey, yeah, sure, we're going to take that. On the other hand, it's still very much for all of us, whether we draw comics or anything else, we still want to be involved in that drawing process because for us, if you offered us a program with a text box where you could just write in linguistic terms and those linguistic terms would be turned into an image, as opposed to giving us a white piece of paper and a pen, we would always choose the paper and the pen because that's how we are wired. I guess most of us, I think there are now artists young enough who grew up on drawing on an iPad, but I would say 99% of us, we started off with a fascination for pens and that they can make marks on a paper. I can tell that the AI using community is different in terms of what they want to do with art or what it means to them. Now, there are some things overlapping with us, but there seem to be a lot of people who are from the technical field, like for example, developers or engineers. Not all of you, of course. I get that giving a developer a program that can be influenced by a language and mathematical terms that visualizes something, an idea or, or just a world or a law, seems to be holding the same fascination as the paper and the pen for artists. And that's also why there are so many comments, I guess, in my comment section saying, what's your problem? We don't get it. <laughs> of course you don't get it because while the outcome might look similar, the making process is very different. And there is a lot of um, esteem connected to that as well. If you think of school, kids who can draw, they are sometimes admired. And I think in my case, just a very personal point of view that I want to give you is I did not have a lot uh, in terms of being popular at school. The only thing that never failed to impress people was my artistic skill. On the other hand, I was very unimpressive and I think very underwhelming as a person. So this was my superpower and it would be so satisfying to take it out, not brag about it, but just 
be like the kid who can draw that stuff and then suddenly gets attention for once. Yeah. It's like you say in my comment section, you just want attention. Definitely, we do. I mean, it's our superpower. Why should we not want to take credit for it? And of course, I know that you guys are capable, if you look at it from that standpoint, that you're capable to see that this does suck. When you are special for this very little thing, and then suddenly everyone can do that. There is another side to this which is that we artists should also realize that the making is still the fascinating part. So this is not going to be taken away from us. I think we can still impress people in our daily life. This does sound pathetic when I say it, but it really is about impressing people by being able to do something. And if you take that a bit further down the line from our school years, then it's definitely worth being able to impress people while others can't, with your artistic skill, you will get yourself a job. Everybody with a sane mind can wrap their head around that and be able to understand that this sucks for us. And I think that a lot of you using AI, you have already gone through that process of where you thought, oh yeah, maybe that sucks a bit for artists. Maybe you've thought that, then I'm already telling you that you're a very empathetic human being. Thank you so much for thinking of that for one second. And you're a bit further down the line with that. You, you have already gone through the acceptance phase that this might suck for people, but now you're using it and you're harnessing it and brought a lot of joy for you or maybe a lot of opportunities even. Then yeah, I do get that, that you're telling me in the comment section that I should get over it and, and, and just start using it for my benefit. So I guess we're not in the same place yet. A lot of artists are still in the acceptance phase where we have to accept, oh, there's AI. We don't really know what to do with it yet because we can do what the AI can do, a lot of us. So why should we use it? The tools that I mentioned for me to use as a comic artist that just takes my stuff and puts it into a model to make my own art without stealing art from other people. This might exist, but for that, I have not drawn enough art in the very style I'm drawing in to make this real. Or maybe I'm just too lazy to train a model. Maybe I think that actually I could use this time just drawing my comic instead of training a freaking model to do that. Or I'm still in love with the process, so I don't want to train the bloody model. I don't want a model to make my art. And once I feed a model with my art, maybe someone else is going to take it. There's just too much uncertainty. Which brings me back to my fear points. Let's talk about fear. Fear is often used as some kind of offensive term to say, ah, oh, you're just afraid. I guess I don't need to tell you that a little bit of fear is healthy. It keeps you from driving a Formula One race on the motorway. It keeps you from walking into a burning building. That's quite handy. But <laughs> of course, there is also the case of too much fear, too much fear of, of change, for example. But it's very depending on the personality, because with things where we don't know yet where it's going to go, it's very natural that some of us will be very welcoming, open and curious towards that new thing, while others aren't. And while welcoming, open and curious are three very good character features or traits, sometimes I just can't bring myself to feel that way. Let's take, look, I live with a person in the same household for whom there is nothing better that could ever happen to them than aliens arriving with a spaceship and then showing their super technologies to humanity and being all like, hey, humanity, here we are. We have been observing you and now we're here to give you all the knowledge that we have collected. That's how it plays out for, for that person in their mind. While for me, I'm almost 100% certain that if ever any intelligent species would find us on a planet who happens to have the same preferences for planets that like we have, like in terms of oxygen and water and stuff like that, then I'm 100% sure or 99% sure at least the first thing they would do is they would destroy us and get rid of us and just kick us off the planet or anything horrible uses as batteries. So for me, that would be an absolute nightmare scenario while for the person I just talked about and who is very close to me and it's like oh I hope so much I'm gonna be alive to see this happening and I'm like oh no I, I really hope I'm gonna be super dead when that is gonna happen and we still are friends so look 
If not, in the comment section. In real life, AI artists and real artists can be friends. Fear is very subjective and there is some things about us that we can change to be more open and curious towards things. But sometimes it's also good to be a bit more cautious when it comes to new stuff, especially if it's like a black box or especially if then there are also people working in the IT department saying, hey, we don't really know what this is going to do. Then that makes all our alarm bells ring. And for me, that's definitely the case when I look at the AI thing. I mean, to me, even a chat GPT cure is freaking scary. While my work colleague who, who also works in development, I'm not a developer, but I work a lot with developers. So he has this app, <laughs> this ChatGPT Plus app, where th this is like a beta version of the Plus version of ChatGPT that can do all sorts of things. So he would go in a store, scan a shelf with different kinds of rice on it, and he would ask ChatGPT, hey ChatGPT, can you tell me which rice I'm gonna use for a risotto with tomatoes and this and that ingredient and then ChatGPT would go and scan the photo and say look there are three rices that you could use for your dish and he is doing everything throughout the day he's doing with his phone and ChatGPT and I find it utterly fascinating because he's a very smart guy and he's very curious about what the thing can do and he wants to know everything about what it can do and that's a good thing I think it's good to get to know the other the, the technology in terms of forming an opinion on whether it's really scary or if it's just like something very practical. Yeah, so I get that. Then I also want to say that there is not only fear on our side, on the artist side, I think there's also a lot of fear on the AI artist side, which is that we, the art community, making all our videos, moaning about artists using AI, they think we want to take away that beautiful gift that AI art has given them. And I totally understand if someone told me, hey, I'm going to chop off your hand now, you will never be able to draw again. I would be scared as well. The other fear I think is similar is that something could happen out of your control. And for us, that would be that a lot of people are suddenly able to do art. And that just is a very messy thought in my head. While I think it's for an AI artist, there is something within their control. Now they can make visuals of things they think of in a very small amount of time. They don't have to rely on other people to do that. So they have this under control and they would have to give it away. I know this doesn't apply for all of you, but still, come on, it's a part of what you're feeling right now. You have to be very in touch with your feelings to know that when you're afraid. And I think it's good that this person who wrote that in my comment section pointed out that it's fear because it made me understand a lot more about the whole situation. Let's just have a look at the villain side. So we saw in the intro, if I didn't have to cut it out because of copyright strike. You saw General Thrawn, who is a villain from Star Wars, saying that he stole art from a character from Sabine, who is an artist in the Star Wars series Rebels. And she draws a lot of stuff and he steals art because he thinks when he steals art, he can get to understand people more. And that's how it, his strategies mostly work. He understands people on a very deep level and then he forms his strategy of attack around that knowledge about the people he has done research on. So he says that he stole this art and then Ezra, the naive hero of the story, not to call us artists naive, but I think that's what AI users think, goes on this typical hero dialogue where he says, you don't understand what you stole there. You can't take it. It's not yours. <laughs> And I thought that's very similar because to General Thrawn, it doesn't matter what this little rebel guy thinks. The only thing that matters is whether you have the power or not. And I guess that's just a very straightforward, very pragmatic way of thinking. And to me, this is a thing I sometimes do when I think something might be really bad, but I really want to do it right now. So I'm also saying I uh, think that this discussion about about using AI for art or not should be very much focusing on art because in other areas of our lives we do villainous stuff all the time, all of us. One example is that when I go on holiday I wrestle a bit with myself. Should I go there? Should I not? It's not good for the environment. And then you see that pearly white beach 
with that turkeys, water, maybe lots of tourists, who cares? But then you think, oh my God, I, I earned that so much. I worked so much to, to be able to afford this holiday. And now I just lay down on that beach and just enjoy myself. Or I might be standing in front of a shelf in, in a store and look at my favorite dessert. And then I check and I see, I see that little word straight away, palm oil. But I, I'm telling you, 50% of the times I would still buy it because my emotions overweigh and I think, oh, I can't live without eating this specific ice cream and then <laughs> eating it in five minutes. And for that, it was worth it. I think it's a bit similar, although I don't uh, expect anyone to have such an extensive analysis of whether they should use or not use AI. Just to give you a bit of context that all of us do those villainous things that General Thrawn is talking about. Hey, it just depends on whether you can do it or not. Just do it. And then just do it because it makes sense that I'm doing it because that's the only thing that brings me to the next point. While other people, they think about, hey, is it really worth for me to get to that next point or get that satisfying feeling when it's actually really bad for other people? Maybe one of you or half a person of you can slightly understand where we are coming from and why a lot of us may come across as a bit aggressive or very fearful of this, in our eyes, villainous behavior. While in your eyes, it might be just a very logical decision. Let's have a look at the use of art for the AI artists. And I think there is some points in this that are very similar. Like for us, one is that it's a big desire of a lot of humans to create visual images of an idea. And also because we are very visual creatures, our eyes are by far one of the most elaborate senses that we have. And if we lose our eyesight, it's very bad for us. So it makes sense that the ability to visualize things is very important. And for an AI artist who was not able to do that beforehand, it's a great level up. Then uh, I guess it also presents money and opportunity to people who use AI who didn't have those opportunities before. You can now uh, apply for being an AI artist instead of a traditional artist or illustrator or graphic designer for a company. So that might be an opportunity. The only problem I see that speaks against that is that if you do that, then you're super replaceable and everyone could do that. So the opportunities are not that much bigger. And I think they're still bigger for people who actually know how to do art and also have a lot of traditionally made stuff in their portfolio, art or designs. If, if you just make like web design, you also have to prove that you have some sense for, for aesthetics, for layout and composition. The next point is a bit similar as for the first point. I think a lot of people just like to play around with visualizing a world or or, or just yeah, play around in general, what comes out, they're just curious, what comes out if I type this, what comes out if I type that. And it's a bit more for me like an AI consumer that I mentioned at the beginning, it's a bit more like a normie role that you have in the AI using part. And then I guess it's also for some people, the mere fact that you're able to create something. <laughs> there are a lot of people who remind me with their rhetoric of someone who really likes to be in charge for stuff, even though they're not often in charge. I think that's the reason why the AI crowd has some problematic individuals among them who tend to like anything that gives them power and who can't really put themselves in our shoes. It's a hard thing to put yourself into anyone else's shoes. So definitely is a plus when someone can. Then the last thing I already mentioned is uh, people are doing this AI art thing for esteem. They want to belong in the art world. They want to have the same reputation and they want to have a say in the art community. And I think that's why I really dislike it when big artists like the one we talked about in one of my previous videos and also other big artists give them credits because that's exactly what they could not have before and the AI art is like the ticket to that recognition and if you as a big artist give someone recognition for using AI art then it's like yeah that last little thing that separated them from our community they have it now and I don't particularly like that although I, I also don't like the fact that it matters to me the feeling 
something I have reminds me very much of jealousy and I don't like for myself to be jealous. But here we go. I don't like it that other people are now allowed in the art community who have not had the same struggles as we had. There it is. And once you have the power, it's really hard to give it away. Hence, we are just all afraid. We're just really scared people altogether. My next point I want to get at is also based on a comment I got. And I know that this comment was certainly not made the first time in my comment section, which is that AI art is here to democratize art. Uh, although I do know what you mean, I will be a real annoying teacher now and tell you what democratizing means or what democracy means. So democratizing means that you're going to establish a system where you will, for each decision you make, you will ask all the people and then hands will go up or stay down and then you count them. And no matter what it was you asked, if there are more hands up than down, then you will do it. But yeah, you, you did not understand the word because what you wanted to say is you want art to be equitable, I guess. Now maybe my English skills are lacking a bit to say this correctly, what you want to say. But I think you want that art is accessible for everyone. I do agree that it would be great for someone in a wheelchair who can't move anything to maybe with a device enter prompts, linguistic prompts and have like a creative thing they can do. I find that unbelievably great if they can do that. But on the other hand, I also have to say if, if that's your point that you think also people with disabilities have to have access to art, then I think you're very bloody fucking ignorant because a lot of people with disabilities, especially if they were artists before they had their accident, also if they just came to this world as a creative person, they have gone through the struggle to learn how to still make art even though they have disabilities and actually it's it's a coincidence that i know a few people who make art in a very curious way you would call it if you have never seen it so they might use their mouths to draw or paint or they might just use their hands that they are barely able to use but they still manage to do those motoric movements to create the art they want to create and it doesn't matter that they have a disability i saw a guy knitting a whole freaking scarf with his feet so I, I just really, I'm really not happy about this attitude. That's just such a weak point. And then even more so, it says that people who have the ability to take a pen into their hand specifically, or the way that we are told to take pens into our hands at school, they should not be using AI art if that's what, what your point is. Then it should only be for people who have a real disability. I know stupid is a strong word, but in this case, I have to say, I find it utterly stupid from the expression that you use, democratizing it doesn't fit at all. And also from the mindset that you think that all people with disabilities, they now want to enter prompt into a computer rather than going through the struggle to learn other ways to hold a pen. Then it's done for a healthy person who does not have a disability. Okay, let's go on. I want to get to a conclusion for this video. So sometimes we do stuff that we know is shit for others or we are complete narcissists and we don't uh, think about that this could be shitty for others. In both cases, we do it just for fun for ourselves. Like I said, like I go to that touristy beach and, and buy a cake with palm oil in it. For me, it's very much about reading the room again. And I said that in my video about Ergo Josh. I think it's very important to know when do I just stand there very proudly and say, hey, I have the right to be at this beach. I'm not breaking the law. And here I am. I'm going to put my rich butt on this beach now, even though I'm taking maybe space from a local. No one would say that, no one right in their minds. And I think the same kind of attitude should be existing for people who use AI art. If you're here, please be respectful and also respect that the locals at this beach are maybe not particularly happy about you being there. I mean, there's no right for them to beat you up while you're at that beach or to rob you or anything. But you have to understand that they're not very happy with what's happening at the moment. Maybe they will come to terms with it at some point and just be like, oh yeah, that's the way it is now. This beach is now crowded and we have to go to another beach. <laughs> There's so many examples for this, like in, uh, in Akihabara in Tokyo, where there were lots of weeps 
all the time foreign weeps and at some point the locals just said hey fuck this we're just gonna we're just gonna go elsewhere and now the locals are elsewhere and all the tourists are in Akihabara it's, it's really bad but yeah I think this tale is as old as humanity some people they find a nice place to be in and then other people also find that place nice and they also want to be there and then maybe the people who were there first they had they have this attitude oh we were here first so <laughs> please leave us alone and maybe at the end of the day the people who are more aggressive win and also the people who are more persistent win and i guess there will be both on both sides there will be people to stay and some will just move and go to another place to a, a bit of a darker corner that is not as nice but yeah so for us artists i would just like to remind everyone who is not living off art i just want to tell you that i myself i like to remember the value of art that it will never go away so for me the value of art really is a paper and a pen and then the magic of, of my hand, drawing something on it. The purpose of art itself is not going to be defeated. That purpose used to be like playful, spiritual, creative. And if you're making money from art, then I mean, this sucks much more. Still be aware that at least the thing that gives you so much joy, it will never go away as long as you make art. And I really hope that you can keep this as a living and that all the AI using artists you will en encounter on your way, that they will be thoughtful of your journey and that you can somehow get along. Yeah, that's that. I'm not expecting anything like a big round of applause for this because I know most of you AI using guys are already typing your comments and because I know a lot of you are maybe not very understanding of the big panic that is going around among us artists but for those who are thank you so much for understanding thank you for listening and I appreciate you and those who want a bit more fun about this subject I want to make a video about the best metaphors that I read <laughs> about people who use AI versus people who draw art because there are lots of metaphors going around I mean I, I use metaphors for this all the time because I'm trying to make people understand and yeah I have to make that video maybe not for AI artists but for the rest of us it's gonna be fun okay I'll see you in any next video please keep creating please keep a lot of love for art especially for real art what are your plans floss and I'll see you in the next video bye bye